God bless you, everyone. So grateful that you could join me on this Wednesday morning. I pray that you are doing well. I pray that you are well rested today and ready for this over the hump day. Uh, in some cases where I'm at in, in Pennsylvania, it is raining, but nonetheless, we still thank and praise God for his faithfulness, for his abundant mercy and his kindness. Listen, I wanna talk to you today about growing pains, growing pains. And so we're gonna take it from a different angle. Amen, thank you, Jesus. Growing pains, give me just one second. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. And as we get into our lesson today, how many of you know that growing pains is not just for children? Okay, we as the body of Christ, those of us, those of us who are the children of God, we go through growing pains, do we not? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Doesn't always feel good. It hurts. It feels like the worst pain ever when God is teaching you. He's ministering unto you. He's developing you. He's instructing you. But nonetheless, our God is faithful and our God is good. So that is our topic today, growing pains. Let's go into our prayer, man. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for blessing right now in the name of Jesus, us, oh God to be able to wake up, Lord God, with the activities of our limbs, oh God. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, yes, God, for Lord Jesus, your light, for your understanding. We thank you for your kindness, God. We thank you, Lord, for your patience, oh God. We thank you for your understanding, God. We thank you for the power, the anointing of God over our lives, in our lives, through our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, God, for this is the day which the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we just don't take, Lord God, we don't take it for granted, God. We don't take it, Lord Jesus, for granted the things that you do for us, oh God. But Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, and we love you, oh God. We honor you, Jesus, and we praise you, God. Yes, God, we magnify and we glorify your heavenly name, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for being a just God, for being a righteous God, for being a saving God, a healing God. Oh God, there is none like you, oh God. You are the only true and living God. Lord, you said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hallelujah. And we should love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul with all our mind, with all our strength. Huh? Lord, we thank you, Jesus, yes, God, for your grace and your mercy towards us, oh God. When we're yet in our sins, oh God. Lord, you died for us, oh God. You died, Lord Jesus, for the ungodly, oh God. You died for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. And Lord, we say thank you, Lord Jesus, yes, God. Lord, we say we love you, oh God. We just honor you on today, God. We honor you, Lord Jesus, for your great power, God. We honor you, Lord Jesus, yes, God, for your wisdom, oh God. Lord, we honor you today, God, for your glory, God, your praise and your majesty, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for being our provider, God. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting every need that we stand in need of, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, yes, God, for breaking every yoke, every chain, every fetter, God. Lord, thank you, Jesus, yes, God, for comforting us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. When we need it comforting, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, for the blood prevailing, God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, the blood of Jesus all around our loved ones, oh God, the blood of Jesus over my uncle as he goes into his operation, God. Lord, let your blood prevail, God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. God, the doctor's hands, oh God, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. Lord, God, the surgeons, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, bless it to be a successful surgery, oh God. Lord, touch and heal his body right now, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. Let him have a great recovery, oh God. In the name of Jesus, yes, God. Let him not have any side effects to the medication, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. Lord, bless him right now. In the name of Jesus, yes, God. Send healing and deliverance, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh glory to God. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your kindness, oh God. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this, thank God. For Lord Jesus, oh God, bless your name, Jesus, yes, God. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for binding up the brokenhearted today, God. Father, in the 
the name of Jesus, oh God. Bring them through the storms of life that may be raged, oh God. Bring them through the suffering, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let not their heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, oh God. Oh God, rebuke the spirit of intimidation and fear, God, all around them, oh God. Lord, rebuke every attack, Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. Every attack on their mind, every attack on their body, every attack on their health, huh? every attack on their mental state, God. Every attack on their finances, oh God. Every attack on their job, Lord, in the name of Jesus, huh? say the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, it is against you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, touch your God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, move, Lord God, that opposition, Lord God, that is standing and blocking them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and opposing, Lord God, Lord, come against, Lord God, every adversarial spirit, Lord God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, coming against them, Lord God, coming against the works of their hands, Lord God, coming against their ministry, God, coming against, Lord God, their faith, Lord God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, Lord, I command deliverance right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, Lord, I command every enemy, Lord God, to be Put on the run, oh God. Lord, destroy the works of the adversary, God. Working against them and coming against the works of their hands, oh God. And all the enemies of their hands, oh God. Lord, bless, oh God, these precious souls, oh God. Lord, make their feet like hinds feet, oh God. That by their God they can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Lord, in the name of Jesus, and make their enemies their footstool, oh God. Cause the enemies, oh God, to come against them one way, to be spin before their face, oh God, to flee before them seven ways, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them victory right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, yes, God. Oh, God, bless them, Lord Jesus, financially, oh God. Those, oh God, that need a financial blessing, oh God. Lord, I command resources, oh God. And Lord, I command the favor of God upon their life right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Cause men to give into their bosom, oh God. If they lack no need for anything, God. Cause them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, God, to be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. God. And Lord, cause your fresh anointing to rest upon them, oh God. Lord, restore the joy of their salvation, oh God. And Lord, increase their faith today, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, God. Cause them, Lord, Jesus, in time, Messiah. Oh, Jesus, that to one, no need for anything. For they that fear the Lord, thank you, Jesus, shall not want, hallelujah, any good thing. And Lord, I thank you right now for doing it in Jesus' name. Save those that are not saved, oh God. Lord, fill them full of the Holy Ghost. And I thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's get into the word of God. God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Very excited. So we are talking about growing things. And so the word grow means to develop to or toward maturity. Again, the word grow means to develop to or toward maturity. And how many of you know that that is very, very important? Because as you are growing, we grow in stages, do we not? When babies are born, they grow. And as babies are developed, they grow into what? Uh, a year old, six months, newborns to what? Six months, six months, excuse me, to three months, three months to six months, to nine months, to 12 months, and so on and so on. Until they get to what? Toddler stages, until they get to youth, and then from there, they, they go to what? Pre-teens and they go into teens. Amen. So there are stages and they grow to what? To be adults. Okay. And then they grow to be young adults. And then they grow to their 30s and 40s and 50s. And, and, and there is a maturity. And understand this. Maturity is not just in age. Maturity is how you perceive things. It is how you understand, how you comprehend. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And so spiritual growth, that's the natural growth. Now, when you deal with the spiritual growth, it means the process of moving toward maturity and one's relationship with God and with other people. Okay? Because you cannot grow in the maturity with God and not grow maturity with people because it works in the same. It goes up and then it's vertical. Okay, man. It's horizontal. Excuse me, vertical. I'm sorry. Vertical is up and down. And then it's horizontal. Amen. And so what we do is the more we study the word, the more we get the understanding of what 
of who God is and what he expects of us and what his word commands us to do and to say and to be, we grow in the maturity of being the men and the women of God that he so desires for us to be. Amen. We go from faith to faith, glory to glory, and strength to strength, every one of them in Zion. And so he says, be ye perfect, even as your what? Your father is perfect. Amen. What does he mean? He wants us to be what? Mature. Amen. He wants us to be mature. He wants us to grow in a maturity in him so that we understand the height, the deep, the, the, the depth, and the length of what God's love towards us. Now, the word pain means physical or mental suffering. That's what pain means, mental or physical suffering. How many of you are going through that right now? You have pains. And it might be, be sometimes because of stress. It might be because of failure to um, obey God. And so God has to what? Chastise us. He has to allow us to bump our heads sometimes because we don't obey his voice, obey his word. And sometimes when we don't submit to him, we have what is called growing pains, surrendering ourselves to him, yielding ourselves to him, humbling ourselves under what his mighty hand. And we go through what growing pains. And there is, there is what we call a process. What does it mean when, when somebody goes through a process? They go through developmental stages of becoming who it is and what it is. It is designed to be. So it has to go through a processing stage. It has to grow through a stage of uh, being uh, like the potter's will, okay, or the potter, or should I say the clay, which is on the potter's will. And it goes through different stages of being molded and made and, and being uh, put back on the potter's will again to be what? Redeveloped. Why? Because you're always growing in God when you submit to God. I love St. John 15, where it talks about abiding in where the vine. And it talks about Jesus being that vine, we are what? The branches. Because the branches are connected to the vine. And so the correlation or the, the similarity and how it relates is that in St. John 15, it talks about Jesus saying, I am the vine. In other words, I am the vine. I am the, the, the I want to say the grapevine, okay? And my father is the what? He is the husband. What does that mean? He is the tiller of the soil. He is the one that is the owner of the vineyard. Every branch, we are the branches. Remember that. Because when you are connected, when you're born again of Jesus Christ, you are what? You are the branch. You are connected to Jesus because Jesus is the vine. And because Jesus is God, the husbandman, okay, is God himself. He is the, the tiller of the soil. He's the owner of the vineyard, okay? And so it says, every branch in me that what? Beareth not fruit. That does not, to bear means to what? Produce. That doesn't produce what fruit he taketh away. Okay. And then he says, that means every branch that is not producing fruit, he taketh away. Because the desire for us to be in Christ, we have to feed our spirit. We have to study the word in order for us to grow, in order for us to mature and be the man or the woman of God that he so desires for us to be. And then he says, and every branch that beareth not fruit, he does what? Every branch in me that bear fruit, he taketh. That beareth not, that every branch, excuse me, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, that doesn't produce fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purges it. What does it mean to purge? It means to thoroughly cleanse, okay? That it may bring forth more fruit. So when you see your mother, taking a piece of a branch and cutting it. There's a certain way they cut it. They put it in the water so that it can do what? After a few days, it does what? It starts producing new roots. 
So we see here to be replanted, amen, so that it produces for someone else a new plant. But then there is when there are dead leaves around or dead branches, you cut those dead branches off so that what? The new ones can emerge and come forth. So what he's saying here, that he has to purge us, he has to cut, he has to cleanse us, he has to allow us to go through tests and trials. He has to allow us to, that as we're going through the process of being uh, developed and molded and made into the woman or the man of God that he desires for us to be, he wants us to be like him. He wants us to have his attributes. He wants us to grow into a state of maturity where he can bring forth more revelatory knowledge so that he can bring forth more. Because, because understand this, to whom much is given, much is required. And when we know more and we understand more about who he is, he begins to what? Grow us. He begins to give us more things, amen, as we are able to handle them. Because remember, to whom much is given, much is required. The more you know, the more is going to be what? Given unto you. That's not just in the, the, the um, I want to say the spiritual, it's also in the physical. The scripture talks about how John said, I wish above all things, beloved, that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So as your soul is prospering, that decision part of you, it is what? Having a state of material, spiritual abundance. Then God can what? Add to you. Amen. You want God to add to you, not only in the capacity where you're able to be able to handle, you know, the material things, but as the spiritual knowledge and the spiritual wisdom of God begins to uh, multiply and increase in you, then he's able to bless you with greater. Why? Because now you're developing into the capacity where you're able to understand how to be able to house the greatness of God, how to be able to handle, you know, businesses, how and to be able to lay hands on people and to what? To heal them by his hands, by his power, amen? And so I'm trying to get it into a place where you understand that growing pains come as you are maturing in God. You're gonna go through tests and trials. You're gonna go through heartaches and pains. You're gonna have attacks, amen? Why? Because you are growing, okay? That means, and there's a difference in when you're growing in God and when God is chastising you, okay? So let's let's begin, begin to explore some of that. The scripture lets us know that as we are maturing in Christ, and I wanna go to, I wanna go to Peter for just a second, and we're gonna go back to where we were in St. John, because remember, too much is given, much is required. And as we enter in First Peter, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Give us the understanding, give us the strength, and give us the wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go to where it says, 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, the 2nd verse, and it talks about, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And then it says, before that, it says, wherefore laying aside all malice, okay, which is hatred, and all gal, um, uncleanliness, gal, meaning dirtiness, and sometimes we have gal in our spirit, which is not of God. So when he says gal, he's talking about deceitful cunning. Amen. And then he says, and hypocrisy, saying one thing and then doing another, envies, having resentment against another success, having jealousies, and all evil speakings. Then he says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may what grow thereby. And then when you're a babe, you're desiring the sincere milk of the word of God. 
So you're in a developmental stage and you begin to what grow. If so be you have taste that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. What does it mean to be built up? You are erected. You are built up a spiritual house. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you are a spiritual house and holy priesthood. That means that you are, are what? You are set apart for God, by God, for what? Spiritual purposes. A, you're a priesthood. You are now a, a, you're in that place where you are a witness for Christ. Amen. And to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That means we offer unto God spiritual sacrifices, that which he can receive. Because now we serve him with, in the spirit realm. We're not serving him in our fleshly, in our, in our carnal state. We're serving him in what? In the place of what? The spirit of God. To, to do what? To offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. Then it talks about how wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in sign chief cornerstone. Elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be what confounded, confused. Who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus Christ. He says unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders re build is disallowed or rejected is, is what made the head of the corner. The same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, where whereunto also they were appointed. And what he's making a distinction and a separation to those of us who what receive the Lord Jesus Christ, he is precious. To those that do not receive him, he is a stone of stumbling. In other words, they are not able to receive the word of God. And so they continue in the era of their ways and the era of what disobedience and sin. And he is an offense to them because they're not ready to submit to him. Okay, those who are what? disobedient, those who are rebellious, those who do not have the spirit of Christ. And also that can be, if you think about it, to those who, who reject God's word and can be what his children, but want to be what rebellious. And so he says here, they stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Okay. That means we are chosen by God to be his children, a royal priesthood. We belong to a king and holy nation, holy people, a peculiar people. We are special unto God that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into what is marvelous light. And so as we follow the scriptures, God wants us to mature in him. What does it mean to mature in him? Let's go to the fourth chapter of what first Peter. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves. That means make yourselves ready likewise, the same, the same mind. For that he that has suffered in the flesh shall what cease from sin, that he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh, in the what? To the what? The flesh, the flesh, the carnal man, to the what? Lust of men, the evil desires of the forbidden desires of men, but to the will of God. So here it is, he says, for the time past of our life may suffice us. It may what? Be sufficient for us to have wrought or to work the will of the Gentiles. In time past, we were what? Gentiles. When we walk in what? Lasciviousness, okay? Uncleanliness, lust, evil desires, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, where they think it strange that you run out with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Stop. In other words, we used to be the same person until God saved us. Now, there should be a difference now. You still shouldn't be the same person, smoking, drinking, and cussing, uh, fornicating, and also lying and being hateful and having what envy and jealousy. But if there is, you still are in a place where God is able to develop you and, and what mold you and make you so that you are no longer that person. You are the person that God is what? He's making into what? A child of God. Amen. You are growing in him. So here it is. He says here. He says, where they think it's strange that you run into the same excess of right with them. Speaking evil of you. 
who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For this cause was the gospel preached unto them that are dead. Talking about us in that time that they might be what judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand, be ye sober. That means be alert and watch unto prayer. And above all these things, have fervent charity amongst yourselves, and charity, which is love, shall what cover the multitude of sins. And so I want to be able to get into where it allows us to understand. When you are growing in God, growing in God, you're going to go through tests and trials. You're going to suffer. There are times, the difference is that when you are living right before God and you are having those growing pains, that means God is developing you. He is pruning you. He is he's taking things out of you, taking that old character, that old nature out of you. And he's putting in the new character of his spirit, which is what? That spirit of God and the attributes of his character in you, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, and temperance and faith. He is developing that in you. He's developing you a spirit of integrity, a spirit of honesty. He's developing in you that spirit of of righteousness amen as you continue to believe his word he's developing that spirit of righteousness which is going to produce strong faith in him because we are now what you're growing in the faith of god in the conviction of the word of god that the more that you study the word of god and you apply the word of god here it is you're going to have what is called growing pains growing pains is when you are being attacked for no reason okay because you are a child of God. Remember, they hated Jesus without a cause. If they hated him, they're going to hate you. Amen. And because of that, they're not going to be ready to receive you all of the time. You're not going to always have people. They're going to be ready to what? To um, understand that you are a child of God and they need to let up off of you. Why? Because when you become born again of the spirit of Christ Jesus and you begin to grow in him through the word of God and you take God at his word. And, and what does it mean to grow? It means that you're applying the word of God. And so what's happening is you are being converted from the old man into the new man in the spirit realm. Who is the new man? In 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it lets us know, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. And so what's happening is, is that you are developing into the person that God has what predestined you to be. And the enemy is fighting that because he's angry, because you're now getting what more revelatory knowledge. And because you are understanding the word of God and you are applying the word of God. Because, let me back up, when you apply the word of God, it is because of understanding. And as, thank you, Jesus, a good understanding of all they that do what? Do his commandments. That's in Saint, uh, excuse me, Psalm 111, verse 10, the latter part of that. A good understanding have all they that do what? That what? Do his commandments. That, that apply his commandments. That apply the word of God. So that when you start applying the word of God to your life and you start operating in it, that's when you start growing in Christ Jesus. Because then the understanding of who he is, God begins to open up your understanding. And remember, it talks about uh, how that which is sown by the wayside, that which is sown amongst thorns, that which is sown amongst thorn, stony ground, on stony ground, that which is on good ground. That which is on good ground, having heard the word of God and receive it and keep it, okay, and do the word of God, those are those that what are growing in him and they're able to bring forth somewhat 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. Why? Because they're hearing the word of God, they're understanding the word of God, they're applying the word of God. And so when you hear it and you understand the word of God and you start growing in him, Here's where the growing pains come in at. The growing pains come in at because you are applying the word of God and the enemy wants to talk you out of your faith. The enemy wants you to no longer be obedient to the voice of Almighty God. The scripture says, if you be willing and obedient in Deuteronomy, you shall eat the what? The good of the land. And so what they're saying is when you walk in obedience to God, you start what? 
you start developing an understanding of who he is and what the scripture is saying. And then you start becoming conformed to what, not the word, word world, you become conformed to what the word of God. And so you become more Christ-like. You become, you start having a changed mind. Thank you, Jesus. Your mind begins to be what? Renewed in Christ Jesus. Why? Because you are now in a place where you are developing a different mindset versus what the world is saying versus what God is saying. Jesus said, "If thank you, Jesus. I love this about God. When we get back to St. John 15, he says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are what? Made clean through the word that I have what? Spoken unto you. When he speaks the word to you, thank you, Jesus. That means that as you're studying the word of God and he what? Speaks the word to you. Thank you, Jesus. Because as you receive, as you're studying, you're receiving his word. As you are in, a, in that place where you are conditioning yourself to do what? To hear the voice of God. How do you hear the voice of God? By studying the word of God. How do you understand the word of God? By studying the word of God and by taking it piece by piece, dissecting the word of God, getting a better understanding by investigating what does the scripture mean here. And so what that means is you need to have, uh, uh, you need to pray first. Lord, give me an understanding of your word. Lord, reveal your word to me. Cause me to have a deeper knowledge and revelatory understanding. And so you also need a three in one a man a dictionary, okay, to be able to break down the word of God. And so when you have those scriptures in the center part, that those um, scriptures that are on the side that are in, excuse me, little letters that have scriptures that support what you are reading, study those as well to give you a clearer understanding, amen? And so what God is doing, he's beginning to what? reveal himself to you through his word. He's beginning to manifest himself. He's giving you clarity, amen, how to walk before him. This word of God is our instruction manual, how to live a life before the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is his food that we feed to what? Our spirit man, amen? Because as you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, you need to feed the spirit man. We feed the natural with natural food, now you got to feed the spirit man because you can't grow in the spirit if you don't feed what? The spirit man, amen? Because he is a different type of food, amen? Glory be to God. And so he says, now are you clean? What does it mean to be clean? You're washed, why? We are washed through the word of God. So when you apply that word, He's washing you. He's washing you from your sins. He's washing you from that negative spirit. He's washing you from that spirit of profanity. He's washing you from that spirit of being dishonest and disloyal and lying and being deceitful. He's washing you through his word. The more you read the word of God, the more you study the word of God, the more you get God on the inside. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. The more that you study the word, you're getting God himself. Remember, God's word, the Bible, the word of God, is God in written form. Thank you, Jesus. It's God in written form. So the more you study his word, the more that you're getting God in written form on the inside of you. And he's replacing all of that carnal mindedness, all of that lust, all of that lasciviousness, all of that envy, all of that jealousy, all of that hatred, all of that, you know, um, dis, um, discontentment and dis depression, amen? What he's doing, he's replacing everything that you're feeling in the carnal, everything that you're feeling in the flesh, every all of the lust, all of the evil desires, and all of the pride, all of the stubbornness, all of the rebellion, because what is he doing? You're, filter, you're now filtering your spirit, man with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're filtering your spirit, man, with the word of God, amen? Because the written word of God is Jesus, is God in written form, amen? And so what you're doing is you're replacing all of that uncleanliness with what? The word of God. And so when you start having growing pains, the growing pains come 
because the enemy is fighting you because the more knowledge that you're receiving, you're being attacked because of the word of God. Remember what the scripture says. He says, thank you, Jesus. He says, it is better for a millstone to be hanged about their neck than that they should offend one of his little ones. Amen. And so let me let me go back to what I really wanted to say, because it was something that came into my thought just a minute ago and just went back out. And Lord, bring it back to my remembrance, because when you are studying the word of God and when you are applying the word of God, what starts to happen is, is that the enemy becomes angry. And so he starts coming for the word of God that was sown in your heart. And so what he does is he fights what you have received. And so he wants your faith to be shaken. He wants your faith to be what? Discouraged. He wants your faith to be what? To be in a place where you just give up on God and you just receive what? revelatory knowledge through the word of God. So what's happening is he's coming for the word that you just received because he wants you to be discouraged. But when you speak to him from the place of understanding the word of God and you remind him, this is what the word of God is saying. Remember when Jesus was being tempted, he said, it is written. And that's when you've got to come at the enemy and say, it is written. This is what the word of God is saying. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why? Because the enemy needs to know this is what God is saying. As we continue, he said, now are you cling to the word which I have spoken unto you. You are being clean by the word of God that you are receiving and the word of God that is being what? Imparted into you. Amen. Thank you. Just that God is speaking unto you through his word. He says, abide in me because as you study the word, he's speaking to you through his word as you're studying it. He said, abide in me. That means to what? Dwell. It means to live in me. Remember, he said, I'm the vine. Fine. You are the branches. So in order for me to grow in God, I've got to stay connected to the vine. The growing pains come as a result of the knowledge that I'm receiving through his word. And so the enemy is attacking me because of the word knowledge that I am receiving. Oh, bless his name. So when I receive knowledge of the word of God and what the scripture is saying, what it is, he's trying to now attack me for what I'm understanding. Let me give you a prime example. If you're being tested on how to forgive somebody and you just study the word of God on forgiving somebody, the enemy is going to test you on what you know. So what is the test going to be about? Forgiveness. If you are having a struggle in loving people, you're going to be tested on what? Loving people. If you have a problem with what? Trusting people. He's going to attack you on what? Trusting people. Why? Because you are now growing in that area. So he wants you to stop growing. Amen. And so thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. To whom much is given, much is required. That means you got to keep on growing. Amen. You got to keep on staying in the word of God. Keep on applying that word of God because what's happening, it is going to help you grow past your pain and help you grow in your pain. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because you're no longer going to have growing pains. And one of the things, oh, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when my niece was growing and as her bones were being extended, oh, thank you, Jesus. Her bones were being extended as her part, as a product of her um, growing. And so her father is tall. Now, she's not very tall right now, but her father is tall. And so as she was growing, I think she might have been, what, three feet, four, something like that. She started growing. She started having pains in her bones. And so her bones, by them growing, and extending, it caused her pain. That's what happens with us as we are being extended and stretched and we are being enlarged and God is stretching us. We are now having what? Growing pains. So that as you're growing in God because of the knowledge that you're receiving in God and the understanding that you're receiving, you are having what? Growing pains. And as a result, you are being extended. Amen. What does it mean to extend? It means to be stretched out of proportion. And so some of you are being stretched out of what? 
proportion as a result of you growing. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, keep growing in God. Why? Because he's maturing you in the area where you're having the most pain. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Lord. I like that. You're being matured in the area where you're having the most pain. And so God is what? He's growing you in that area where people are persecuting you. When you have to minister unto people, you have to be able to understand them. And you have to be able to understand how the enemy operates in different personalities of people. Amen. There are some people, and it's not just the, just the enemy. Some people have mental illness. Some people have what is called, they've been, you know, um, un, unwilling to love people. And you're the person, when you show them love, they're, you're the person that they reject because they've been hurt so many times and they don't know how to love because you're, the love that you're giving them is a love that's saying, I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to give you the love of God that he gave to me. Amen. And so he's what? He's giving that to you, beloved. Mm, this is good. So listen, we're going to continue again and I'm going to continue this on Thursday. But I want you to understand and keep this in mind. Growing pains. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And so he says, abide in me, dwell in me, live in me, and I in you. This is Jesus talking. In St. John 15 and 3, 15 and 4, he said, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. In other words, he's letting you know, you as the branch that is to be connected to me, the vine, you can't grow apart from me. So then he says, except you abide in the vine, except you what a live and dwell in the vine. In other words, you got to stay connected to the vine in order to keep on producing uh, the attributes of Christ, in order to have a renewed mind, in order to be able to be able to um, be victorious, in order to be able to overcome the enemy. You got to stay connected to the vine. Amen. And then he says, no more can ye, you, meaning us that are the branches, no more can ye except you what abide in me. No more can you except you what dwell or live inside of me. Oh, this is good. This is good. Listen, I may just come back later on this evening because this is really good. I pray that you are being blessed. And listen, to all of you who are listening, I pray that if, if it's been a blessing to you, please help me and do this for me. Please um, like and subscribe. Amen. At the ending, when you see the C come up and it says subscribe, please subscribe for me. Is that all right? And continue to enjoy what you are listening to. Until we meet again, God bless you and I love you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.